At the request of my girlfriend, I'm making some peanut butter M&M cupcakes. Didn't take her much to convince me. Those sound delicious. Now, the recipe calls for many M&Ms. The store near me only had a regular. But still, if you want some delicious peanut butter M&M cupcakes, let's make them. Also for this recipe, make sure you sit out a half a cup of butter and three eggs. It's always good with baking to have your butter come to room temperature. It's nice and soft and warm eggs just mix better. So do that right away as well. First things first, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. This recipe yields 20 to 24 cupcakes. So make sure you have enough pans for it. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to do multiple bake cycles. So let's line our pans with muffin, or cupcake liners. If not, you can always spray them. But nowadays it seems like a lot of the popularity with cupcakes is presentation. After preheating your oven, it says take either yellow or white cake mix. I went with yellow. And sift it into a small bowl and then set that aside. So these bags have a nice kind of tear open in the corner which works really well. And then I can just easily sift it. So pour it out, shake your sifter. This just makes it really light and fluffy. That's all sifting does. Shake it like go. There we go, sifted yellow cake mix. In a large bowl, we need to break our three eggs. One tough hit, then a crack. third cup of vegetable oil, one cup of milk, and it's best to use whole milk, half a cup of sour cream, Make sure you fill the cup densely with that. Don't leave a bunch of pockets. It's easy to do with sour cream because a lot of times you fill the measuring cup with a spoon so you don't think to really push it down in there. Make sure it all fits. And then you need one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Good old vanilla extract. If you plan on baking a lot, buy a big thing of it. It never expires and you get more bang for your buck that way. So I'm gonna gently stir all these together with a wooden spoon. It might be best to start with a whisk, actually. So I'm gonna start with a whisk. But you're gonna wanna switch to a wooden spoon soon, just because we're gonna be pouring in that yellow cake batter, or yellow cake mix. So now I'm going to lightly stir in this cake mix a little at a time until it's nice and smooth. Make sure you get all the yellow cake mix. This is helping to get some of the air bubbles out too that the whisk put in it. That's nice and smooth. It's a very good batter. Smells delicious. At this point, you're going to want to switch to an icing spatula. 
These are super useful. Not only can you stir things with them, but they're really good for scraping the sides of a container to really get all your batter out. So I'm just gonna stir my batter together a little bit more. Really make sure I scrape all the edges of this container. Now we need to fold in one cup of M&Ms. And folding in means you're not just violently stirring. You do this motion, you're folding. You know, it's not laundry we're folding, but it's batter we're folding. The whole reason we're doing that with these M&Ms is so that the dye doesn't mix everywhere. So if you want it to look pretty, fold in. If you don't care, you can stir them in. But folding's easy enough. So just a nice, gentle fold. You'll see this technique in a lot of things too. One thing that comes to mind for some reason is scones. I don't know why, but apparently you do a lot of folding for scones. So let's just gently fold these in. Now we need to fill our cupcake liners three quarters of the way full. So just pour a little into each one. You can do spoonfuls if, if it helps make you more comfortable. I'm just going to go quick and then clean up afterwards. So I ended up with just 20. It said 20 to 24. As you can see, a few of mine are a little fuller than three quarters, which just means they'll be a little bigger. It's not that big a deal. Just make sure they're all pretty even. That way the bake time is consistent for all of them. You don't want any of them too burnt or underdone. Now we need to put our cupcakes into the oven for 17 to 22 minutes, or a technique they use a lot for a cake is until a knife inserted comes out clean. Some people use a toothpick, whatever works, and I usually prefer a knife. So 17 to 22 until a knife is clean. I'm trying to put all mine on the same rack. So I'm going to look at them in about 16, 17 minutes. Try a knife, see how it looks. May take up to 22 minutes. Now, while your cupcakes are baking, you can start to work on the frosting. First thing you need to do is mix half a cup of peanut butter with half a cup of butter. Uh, this is where you need kind of a stand mixer or a powered hand mixer. Otherwise, you're really going to have to beat these together, which you can do, and it works. Just like with the sour cream, your half a cup of peanut butter, really make sure you pack it full. So I'm going to get the half a cup of butter in there first. The softened butter, so it uh, it'll beat nice and easily. And then our half a cup of packed peanut butter. Creamy peanut butter. And you can use the beater to kind of get it off. Because it's going to be touching it anyway. So now starting low... Get our peanut butter and butter together. Normally I wouldn't beat something so intensely, but I really wanted to make sure all the butter got mixed in. So you can see if you're doing that by hand, it's going to take some effort. Now to this peanut butter butter mixture we need to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So there's one. Oops. There's a little over two but it's not that big a deal. If you're nervous about measuring things out, don't pour them out right over your container. I've spilled before and it's not good. Now we need to slowly add three cups of powdered sugar, or you can add four. Okay, so why can it vary so much? Because what we're going to do later is add milk until we get the desired consistency we like. And that's up to you. But if you've had cupcakes and icing before, you know what a good buttercream consistency is. So on a very low speed, we're going to start adding powdered sugar in. Now the reason we don't go at a higher speed is because it would fly everywhere. So I'm really just going to pour a little in first, then mix. Just go really slow. 
This is the part where you should really be patient. I'm not gonna add too much more than that. Now with our mixer on low, we're gonna add one tablespoon of milk at a time. And just like for the batter, it's good to use whole milk. You're going until it becomes light and fluffy. So there's one tablespoon. Okay, so that's not going to do much yet. So there's two. I'm going to speed it up for a second too. You'll see it start to soften up. You want it kind of thicker. Buttercream's not the thinnest icing. Okay, that's a good consistency to me. That's the kind of icing I'm familiar with. So, get it off your batter. Make sure it's all evenly mixed by scraping down the sides and beating again which I already did, so it's looking good. And then you can either just glob it onto your cupcakes once they've cooled, or you can pipe it on. Now, if you don't have, like, actual gear for piping and stuff, you can just use a plastic bag and cut a corner, which I'll do in a minute. It's the poor man's frosting piping. So, after 17 minutes, I took my cupcakes out. But first, I had done this knife test. See how clean that is? It's okay if it's moist, and if there's a super tiny little crumb on it, it's fine. But you don't want to see a lot of crumbs, and you don't want to see batter. So let these cool, and we'll put our icing on them. Alright, so it turns out I do actually have one of these icing bags. They're pretty cheap, so if you think you're going to do icing a lot, they're worth it. And they have different tips that do different patterns, so it's pretty fun if you're into that stuff. Otherwise, just do a Ziploc bag or just a plastic bag. Cut the corner and then you can just squeeze it out the exact same way. And a lot of people can make it look just as nice. So, take your icing and then slowly fill your bag with it. So, a lot of people actually turn it out too. Kind of roll down the edges. Let's get it all in there. Then you can be sloppy with it some. So just keep scraping it out and fill up your bag. Okay, so here comes the decorating part. I'm not super great at it. Uh, a lot of people are better. But anyway, if you've seen people ever ice anything, you kind of hold your bag like this, and then you just kind of push it through. See how it comes out all neat like that? And you just do a steady rhythm with it. I'm not doing this for any special occasion, so this first one's going to be fancy and the rest are going to be sloppy. So I'm just work your way around. I wish I had gotten a bigger nozzle. If you want it to come out quicker, cut yourself a bigger corner off. Okay, I'm going to throw some M&Ms on it, because these are M&M cupcakes. So I'm going to make it look fancy. That was way too many, but I'll just throw a few on there. Wow, there we go. Look at that thing. I'm going to keep going, too. It's going to be like a... Like a double-decker icing thing. I, you can tell I'm not that great at it. A lot of people are. So just stick with it though and it'll turn out really good. Alright, let's try that sucker. So now the fun part, trying them. My girlfriend gets the nicer looking one. Well, nice for me. And then I get this piece of crap one. But, it's the taste that matters. Mmm. I like it. Pretty good. I like it. Really good. Really easy. The hardest part's the icing. So if you're not being trying to be fancy, just plop it on there. That's what I'm going to do with the rest of them. You want peanut butter and M&M cupcakes? Look no further.